runners up who are also going to give uh, student modeler talks. And the next one is uh, Zach Fleming, yes. who will be talking about a hydrological model for prediction, reanalysis, and capacity building. And each of these entries were, were phenomenal. We're pleased that they're providing uh, talks with us. Because the uh, student talks are only 15 minutes, um, we sometimes don't take any questions like we did with Julia. So, uh, so if you take all 15 minutes, no questions. If you end a little early, you'll get one or two. So thank you. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna talk about uh, EF5, which stands for the Ensemble Framework for Flash Flood Forecasting. This is a hydrologic modeling framework we developed at the University of Oklahoma in collaboration with the National Severe Storms Laboratory. And the idea was that we wanted a hydrologic model that was suitable for producing uh, flash flood forecasts at high resolution, which is for us one kilometer over the entire US. And we wanted to be able to produce these forecasts very rapidly. So in response to a rainfall that was occurring, so we were using a radar-based rainfall that occurs every two minutes. And so that was kind of the driver for development of this whole system. And what we did when we were developing this is we actually made it very modular. And so we designed different modules here and so that you can actually plug and play in the code or, and in the configuration files to enable and disable the different modules. So we have modules for precipitation. So we can load in precipitation in different formats and things like that. And we can convert on the fly between formats. We do not reproject on the fly though, so it's only a conversion process. The same goes for the evapotranspiration. We've also added in kind of snowmelt models, and so you can see kind of how the flow goes. If you add in snowmelt, the precipitation goes to the snowmelt model, which then goes to the surface runoff model. Uh, for the surface runoff models, we have kind of three options. We have Crest, which is basically a VIC-based uh, model. We have the Sacramento model, and then we have what we call hydrophobic, which is basically there's no infiltration into the land surface and everything runs off. Um, and then we couple those to a couple different routing options, the primary one being kinematic wave routing, which is basically just a very simple, um, you know, going downhill, downslope uh, routing scheme. And we use that, and we can then produce a variety of outputs where we can look at things most commonly stream flow. We can also do some um, recurrence interval work if you have a historical run of the model simulation that you can compare against. Um, we're playing around with inundation, and so we're trying to do different things there so that we can get uh, water depth and water extent, and we're also uh, looking at soil moisture. We've also coupled this with parameter optim optimization with uh, DREAM if you want to calibrate the hydrologic model, although that's not actually uh, how we tend to do things. Just kind of going forward, what does this all look like? Well, this is written in C++. It's about 20,000 lines of code, and about 1,000 of that is actually with the water balance models. There's another about 1,000 lines of code that's actually with the routing models. And then the rest of that is really what I call kind of glue code. It's code that's just making it all work, making it so that you can read it, the configuration files, so you can have all these different options, so you can specify the parameters, so you can specify the inputs and outputs and things like that. And kind of the point of showing this here is just showing you that you should really kind of adopt these frameworks because you're getting a lot of code for free when you do that and that your models are actually pretty simple compared to the overall uh, framework of reading files, reading data, and doing conversions and things like that. So this is the system we built um, for doing kind of flash flood forecasting. It's called FLASH, which stands for Flood Locations and Simulated Hydrographs. So you can see on the left here, we're using the uh, MRMS, which stands for Multi-Radar, Multi-Sensor, and it's the kind of Q3, which is QPE version three, the rainfall observations. So you can see that these are at a scale of one kilometer every two minutes. So we're trying to build a hydrologic model that can actually take these uh, rainfall estimates and then propagate them forward into kind of a stream flow forecast, produce forecasting uh, flooding. And so to do that, we built the uh, storm scale distributed hydrologic modeling framework, which is EF5, which I was just kind of explaining there. And then we're kind of taking this further now and we're going and we're saying, hey, okay, we've built this. What can we do with this? Can we predict actually impacts? Can we couple this with something like the agent-based modeling and things like that to kind of tie this all together to see what will the humans do when we issue a flash flood warning and how will they uh, interact? Will they actually not drive through flooded roads if we tell them roads are flooded and things like that. And that's kind of where we're trying to get. So if you've ever had a wireless emergency alert on your phone for a flash flood warning at three in the morning, you know how kind of annoying that is and you know how it probably wasn't relevant to you. And so that's kind of what we're trying to fix, right? As we're trying to give tools to the National Weather Service so that they can actually issue better flash flood warnings so that they don't have to alert people when they don't need to and that the people that they do alert can take it very seriously. Um, if you're familiar with the National Water Model, which is something that's also come online very recently, you're probably wondering kind of what's the difference here. And this is just a brief rundown of kind of the differences. 
So the national water model has 2.6 million forecast points. We have about 10.2 million. Uh, we have multiple different water balance models, which I kind of described. The national water model only uses no AMP right now. The national water model likes to calibrate. And we uh, don't, we just look at a kind of a, a priori parameter, so we don't do any calibration of the hydrographs in our model. We do that all driving the parameters for um, estimates of kind of the land surface and soil surface. Um, the biggest difference, though, is the actually uh, the cycling of the model and how frequently they're run. So flash is run every 10 minutes with a 12-hour forecast compared to the national water model, which is run every hour with an 18-hour forecast. So you can see that you're getting six runs in an hour with flash. And so if you have a flash flood that's about to occur or is occurring, um, you can issue a warning much quicker because you'll have the information into the hydrologic model much quicker. The other thing we've done with flash is we've looked at doing a, uh, sorry, with EF5 is we've done a hydrologic reanalysis. So with the MRMS precip, we actually have a reanalysis that's been derived from that, that's covering the time period from 2001 through 2011, which is the time period that there is basically single pole radars. So this data set is very homogeneous, and so that's kind of why we're looking at it. Um, so we re-ran that. We put in the five-minute data, which was what was collected at that time. Um, we put that all in, and then we kept um, just four values as the output from the hydrologic model. We kept the maximum stream flow the time of the maximum stream flow, and then the maximum stream flow normalized by the drainage area. And then we also kept the minimum soil moisture. And the idea was to use these values to then kind of develop uh, climatologies of where flash flood was happening and to see how they, the model was performing with that. Um, so this is just an example of output from kind of the hydrographs from this reanalysis. So this is a flash flood in Arkansas that killed 20 people in June of 2010. It occurred at a uh, campground where people were sleeping and it occurred kind of overnight. You can see the black dots here are the observations, and then we have kind of the three model runs from the three different water balance models. Uh, so you can see how they compare. We're a little bit early in this gauge, um, but overall, like, you'd prefer to be early than late, so that's okay. We have a uh, different uh, gauge here that was located nearby in kind of a different basin. So you can see we're much better on the timing here, and you can see that the models, um, the two uh, infiltration-based models tend to underestimate a little bit and the hydrophobic model overestimates a little bit, and this is kind of what you would expect. You want to be able to encompass uh, the observations with your models. To look at kind of a larger scale validation, this is the correlation coefficient across the US, so all these dots are different USGS gauges. You can see how kind of the correlation goes there. We're pretty good out in the east. Um, we don't deal with snow when we did the reanalysis, so we do poorly in the west. The radar coverage is also poor in the west, and so you have a significant drop off in correlations there, which is kind of what you'd expect. You can also look at this in terms of the same information, just in terms of now basin area and also kind of bias. So you can see kind of presenting the same information here. We're going up to what we consider flash flood basins, which are about 1,000 kilometers squared. And so you can see that um, across that range, we tend to do pretty good. You'll see kind of the low red dots where, we, again, in the Mountain West, we don't deal with snow and the radar coverage is bad. So our rainfall estimates are bad. So you can see overall, we're pretty happy with the performance of the system. But it actually seems to be working pretty well, again, without any sort of calibration. Um, we are making all this data available. We have kind of a website here. You can go, you can actually browse the data, and then you can download the data for individual days. It's very useful. We we're doing some other analysis here. So kind of the bottom left plot with the yellows is the maximum unit discharge that occurred over this entire time period. Um, in the bottom right, you have the uh, minimum soil moisture that was associated with flood events. So we're looking at in flood events, was the soil saturated before the uh, rainfall that caused the flood? Or was it kind of a uh, rain falling on dry soil that then was just uh, the rainfall intensity was so great that it overwhelmed and produced a flood? You can also look at the timing of the flood, which is what you see in the top right, as a function of seasonality there too. If you look closely at the plot, you can actually see in kind of the spring, which is the um, March, April, May timeframe, you can see things like MCS coming off the mountains in Colorado and propagating downstream. And you can see that reflected in our model simulations as well. So one of the other projects we've been doing with EF5 is actually capacity building. So we've been uh, working with their various agencies, um, particularly with NASA, with their SEVERE program, to look at how we can use EF5 in Africa to do kind of flood forecasting there to be able to scale up. So you can see uh, the workshops we've done over the past few years here. We've done um, five of them now, um, various countries. And so it's been kind of a big success. And we've been really focused with EF5 on making it very usable for the users. So we have hopefully nice documentation. Um, we've made nice kind of PowerPoints that go through the training and to do kind of all those things for you so that people can actually learn how to use it so they can take this and they can use this in their own countries. Um, a lot of these workshops, they're in specific countries and specific places, but they invite uh, representatives from kind of all the surrounding countries 
uh, there to learn as well. And then they can go and they can take that back to their national governments uh, as well. And so it's kind of a nice thing. And it's a nice thing for us because we've actually fixed a lot of bugs in the model as we've been working on different things. The people have been trying different things. We're like, hmm, that's funny. That's not working right. And we'll dig in the code and be like, oh, yes, we made a typo there. And so you can kind of fix those things as part of this process. So it's good for everyone. Um, and this is my last slide, just to kind of summarize everything. Again, we have uh, EF5 Ensemble Framework for Flash Flood Forecasting, which is a really nice system. We're doing hydrologic modeling now. We have a reanalysis that you can go download if you're interested in that. And we also have kind of the capacity building. We actually have videos that are online on YouTube as well. And so you can go check those out if you're interested in kind of learning how to use it and walking through the training. Uh, EF5 is all open source. The source code is on GitHub. So you can go there if you're interested in downloading it and modifying it. and contributing. Um, that's all I have for today. Thank you. We do have time for questions. Okay. So well done. No questions. <laughs> all right.